Hello everybody and welcome! We're back experiencing some purple pain. Yes, our nice rover slash base, the Aardvark, is still plowing on over the surface of EVE, the planet with probably the weirdest properties in Kerbal Space Program. We have a lot of tedious driving ahead of us, but I'm trying to entertain you here and not bore you to death, so I was wondering how to go about that for this particular video. If you're like me, then your mind maybe also tends to wander off during long drives. I actually like that, because sometimes the best ideas are born that way. Especially since I activated my ingenious newly developed manual autopilot system. Yeah. So I started thinking about the real world equivalent of EVE, which is of course Venus, the second planet from the Sun and, besides Mars, our closest planetary neighbor in space. Venus is for all intents and purposes a deadly world. First of all, it's the hottest planet in the solar system with an average surface temperature of 737 Kelvin, which is 462 degrees Celsius or 860 degrees Fahrenheit respectively. That is insane! That is more than twice the temperature you need for baking a cake in your kitchen oven, or making a pizza for that matter. Remember Ray Bradbury's science fiction classic Fahrenheit 451? You wouldn't need any firemen to ignite books at that temperature, because they would have already burned to a crisp. However, Eve is a bit more benign in this department. I took measurements at sea level and around 4000 meters above sea level, and the temperature ranges between about 330 and 370 Kelvin. Compared to Kerbin's 300 Kelvin at the Space Center, you might think looking at those numbers, hey, that's a slightly warmer day. However, if you calculate those values in Celsius, uh, sorry Fahrenheit guys, I really don't comprehend your scale, 330 Kelvin is almost 60 degrees Celsius, which is sauna territory, and 370 Kelvin is close to the boiling point of water, around 100 degrees Celsius. So yeah, not that pleasant, but still nowhere near the hellscape that is the surface of Venus. Remember when I said, at the temperatures prevalent on Venus, books would burn? Well, they wouldn't, since there is no oxygen available. Venus's atmosphere is composed entirely of carbon dioxide, a bit of nitrogen and trace gases like sulfur dioxide, and also some sulfuric acid in the clouds. In short, really, really toxic. The current school of thought on Venus is that it once was a more habitable planet, but a runaway greenhouse effect made it the crazy place it is today. By the way, if humanity continues to pump out greenhouse gases the way it does, one day our planet could end up the same way. There will be a point of no return sometime in the future where no amount of reverting to more environmentally friendly practices would save us. But what about EVE? Well, I have no idea what its atmosphere is comprised of, since the game doesn't tell us that. The atmospheric sensor just CPUs out some random science message, so we have no idea how toxic it may be. We do know that it doesn't contain any oxygen, since jet engines won't work on EVE. So let's stick to the only comparable scientific measurement we have. Pressure. Kerbal Space Program measures pressure in kPa, which stands for kilopascal or a thousand pascal. If you're a diver, you might be more used to psi or bar. The average pressure at sea level on Earth is 101.325 kPa, so that's basically around one bar. If you look at your press met barometer in game, you can measure about 100 kPa at the space center, so Kerbin is comparable to Earth in that regard. However, EVE clocks in at around 500 kPa at sea level and about 350 kPa at 4000 meters above sea level. So if you launch from the Purple Pains oceans, you need to overcome an atmosphere that has five times the pressure of what you're used to. Compared to Earth and back to diving, that is roughly the pressure you experience at the depth of 40 meters underwater. The deepest I have ever been was 33 meters exploring an awesome wreck in the Adriatic Sea, by the way. So you may think EVE's atmospheric pressure is pretty high, right? Wrong! 
It is nothing compared to what you would experience on Venus. Its surface pressure is classified at 92 bar. That is 9200 kPa or 90 times the pressure of Earth. Or Kerbin for that matter. Back to diving, you would have to go as deep as 900 meters underwater to reach that kind of pressure. Thought you ever had to breathe heavily? I can't begin to imagine what the lung of an indigenous Venus alien would have to look like to cope with that amount of pressure. If they would have lungs for that matter. Interesting little fact, when the Soviets landed on Venus, they didn't even bother with parachutes but used a metal disc instead since the atmosphere is that dense. So yeah, two wins for the real world planet in our Venus vs Eve shootout. But what about gravity? Well, that is a completely different story. Since Venus and Earth are of similar size and density, their gravity is also in the same ballpark, with Venus having a bit less gravity at 0.9 g, probably since it is also a bit smaller than Earth. So while the gravity might be comfortable, the atmospheric pressure would still crush you to death. Eve, on the other hand, is a different beast altogether. The double C seismic accelerometer tells us that its surface gravity is about 1.7 g, which is the highest of all rocky bodies in Kerbal Space Program and one of the reasons why it's so hard to get any vehicle back from the surface to an orbit around EVE. Since my Purple Pain series is about the total exploration of EVE, let me talk for a while about previous and current missions to Venus. The first to really go there were the Russians, who made the first flyby with the Venera 1 spacecraft in 1961. However, there were some technical issues and the probe lost contact with Earth before its closest approach. A year later, NASA followed suit and sent the Mariner 2 spacecraft, which made the first measurements of Venus's temperature. The first vehicle to get to the surface of Venus was Venera 3, which crash landed in 1966. The next one, Venera 4, managed to collect the first direct measurements of another planet's atmosphere. To this we owe the knowledge of the atmospheric composition of Venus. The first successful landing was Venera 7, which touched down on December 15, 1970. It relayed data for about 20 minutes before succumbing to the deadly environment of Venus. It already had to endure 30 minutes in the atmosphere, since descending through that soup takes a lot of time. NASA managed to land the Pioneer probe on Venus in 1978. By the way, the first color images were sent back to Earth by Venera 13 in 1981. It's arrived for 127 minutes longer than any previous Venus probe. In recent years there have been a few missions to the orbit of Venus, for instance the Akatsuki mission by the Japanese, launched in 2010. It actually missed its first orbital insertion, but managed to get into orbit around Venus in December 2015 and is now performing its scientific duties. And of course, NASA wants to go back to Venus. There is the Venus in situ explorer or VICE in short. They do love their acronyms. It is currently set for maybe a launch in 2022 and is planned to take core samples. Around the same time the European Space Agency ESA wants to launch their Venus entry probe. The big issue for Venus missions of course is still the hostile surface environment. A few ideas have been proposed to cope with those, for instance keeping sensitive communication equipment in an airplane of sorts in the upper atmosphere, where the temperature and pressure are much lower. Another proposal includes a nuclear power source used to cool a rover able to survive on Venus. An even more ambitious plan proposes a colonization of Venus using floating platforms. When placed at an altitude of about 50 kilometers, the temperature ranges from 0 to 50 degrees Celsius, which is manageable. Atmospheric pressure is about 1 bar and due to the gravity of 0.9 g, it might even be comfortable. I would be very cross if they wouldn't name the first colony of that kind Bespin. Well, I hope you enjoyed this probably slightly more informative than usual video. I had to offer you a little more than just watching a rover driving around for 20 minutes straight. 
If you did like it, please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and sharing this to your space interested friends. In the next episode we are going to visit a few new biomes and you will witness the full capabilities of the Aardvark rover when Purple Pain returns. So stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching, goodbye.